The World Health Organization, the WHO, has proclaimed February 4 as World Cancer Day in order to promote worldwide awareness for one of the big unresolved problems of mankind, the epidemic of cancer. While every effort to create worldwide awareness about the need to end this epidemic should be applauded, there are serious doubts that the World Health Organization is able to help accomplish this goal. Why is that? Today, almost one-third of the money financing the WHO's operations comes from multinational pharmaceutical companies. As return for this investment into the WHO, the drug industry expects a huge return on these investments from this world body. Thus, the WHO is no longer independent, but its programs and activities, including World Cancer Day, essentially turn into marketing campaigns for patented chemical drugs. The pharmaceutical industry has no interest whatsoever to end cancer. For this industry, the cancer epidemic is a multi-billion market for its patented chemotherapy drugs. Ending cancer would lead to a meltdown of these lucrative global drug markets. In turn, the continuation of the cancer epidemic is the precondition for the continuation and future existence of the pharmaceutical investment business. For the drug companies, the World Health Organization is a perfect veil to mask its unscrupulous business with disease. Allowing these interests to influence and steer the decisions of the World Health Organization is like inviting a virus to enter a healthy cell and reprogram it, or, to use another picture, like inviting the Mafia to run the police headquarters. My name is Dr. Matthias Rath, and there's a good reason why I am talking to you today so distinctly. For a quarter of a century now, I have been a first-hand witness to the devastating role of the pharmaceutical industry as well as the drug money-influenced World Health Organization and its destructive effect on the health of the people of the world. More than two decades ago, I was privileged to make breakthrough scientific discoveries that will eventually lead to the natural control of cancer as an epidemic. Cancer cells use the same mechanisms that some healthy cells use to migrate through the human body, the local digestion of connective tissue. However, in the case of cancer cells, this mechanism goes all right and the connective tissue digestion runs uncontrolled, leading to metastasis and eventually the death of the patient. Moreover, we could prove that certain natural substances, namely micronutrients, are able to block the uncontrolled spread of cancer cells while leaving healthy cells unharmed. I published this groundbreaking discovery in 1992 together with two-time Nobel laureate Linus Pauling. This discovery instantly threatened the global pharmaceutical market of patented cancer drugs. And not surprisingly, the proponents of chemotherapy decided to ignore and silence this knowledge, thereby risking the lives of millions of cancer patients who have since died from cancer. But we did not give up. In 1999, we started our own research institute with natural cancer control as the first target of our investigations. By 2002, three years later, our scientists had confirmed these discoveries. We decided to announce this major medical breakthrough to the world. So on March 8 that year, the world's largest newspaper, USA Today, published a full-page announcement, Breakthrough in Cancer Research. It stated, Our research proves that vitamin C, lysine, proline and specific extracts from green tea can inhibit the spread of cancer cells. With this announcement, we had apparently dug out the war axe against the chemotherapy lobby and their stakeholders in medicine, politics 
and the media. With more than 100 lawsuits against me and my colleagues, the drug lobbyists try to stop this message from reaching the corners of the world. To no avail. Today, thousands of patients around the world are using this breakthrough already with encouraging results. Some of them even experience a complete remission of their tumors, like this lung cancer patient. By now, the information that cancer is no longer a death verdict has spread around the world. You may have seen Ty Bollinger's recent online documentation, The Truth About Cancer, or visited some of the YouTube lectures by my colleague Dr. Netzwicki or myself. If you want to know more about this scientific breakthrough in natural health that may lead to the control of the cancer epidemic, you can read the popular science summary of our research online for free. My message for the upcoming World Cancer Day is clear. If you follow the World Health Organization and its corporate sponsors, cancer will continue to spread in epidemic proportions. Despite all your good intentions, you may one day wake up and feel abused by the Peter Pipers of the pharmaceutical drug lobby and a corrupted World Health Organization. If, however, your goal is to help prevent cancers by science-based natural means and one day even end the cancer epidemic altogether, I encourage you to inform yourself about our research and our decade-long battle for human health. Contact us to see how we can work together, people, health professionals, activists, all committed to end cancer and united in the promise not to end this until we reach this goal. World Cancer Day 2016 is not a one-day dog and pony show for us. It is the starting point of a campaign that will not end until we will hand over a world without cancer to our children and to future generations. You have the choice. Join us and do it now.